Hi, welcome back to Nessa's Nook. Tonight, we're going to go ahead and continue the no buy week. And um, we did have tacos earlier. And I had a little bit of taco meat left. And I added just a little bit more so there would be more meat on there. I added some of my freeze-dried hamburger. I'm telling you, I don't care for canned hamburger. I've, I have some. I'll use it if I have to. I should probably right now because I can't taste it. I'm not a fan of canned hamburger. However, I love the freeze dried hamburger. Just, I love it. Anyways, so what I'm going to do is the other day I had posted a video on the homemade pizza crust. Now I took that out of the freezer. It's still kind of a little bit frozen. And I also, and you can dehydrate in your oven. You don't need a dehydrator or whatever. This right here is, uh, I cooked up the pinto beans and then I dehydrated the pinto beans and I added um, tomatoes, onions, and spices. And then what you just have to do is add some water to reconstitute that. So this is the way we like our taco pizza. It does have a little bit of beans in with the meat, but at this point there's hardly probably not any at all. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and spread this out. And I asked my husband, I said, well, how do you want to do the cheese? Because he has decided he really, 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 really likes the liquid cheese. We've been using it on a whole bunch of stuff. And I have videos on that too, um, recanning the liquid cheese. If you get a chance to do that, I would highly recommend doing that. It's very, very, very tasty. And what I do with that is I buy the number 10 cans of the chill, of the uh, liquid cheese, and I add queso, or not queso, excuse me, rotel tomatoes, and I water bath it. So what I'm going to do is kind of drop some of the cheese so I can kind of stir it in. I'm still going to have cheese on the top, obviously. But the rest of that cheese will go into um, the last day of the, of the no-buy for the chili. We're having um, nachos made out of the chili. So you can check that out tomorrow also. So anyways, there's that. Now... I did earlier this week, and I don't know for sure if I think I made a video of it or you with it. This is the leftover of those onions. And like I said, I love onions. I just, I know I can't still really taste them, but I know what the onions taste like, and it's just, I love onions. I just, I'm so glad that I'm able to still eat onions. When I first came home from the hospital, onions were on the no-no eat, eat list and I about died. So anyways, I re-added a little bit of water, a little bit more taco seasoning. I do actually have a video on me making my taco seasoning. And I'll probably just use a spoon instead. But what I do now is I'm going to go ahead and put this taco meat all through the pizza now granted this is a very small pizza but it is just my husband and I and this will be more than enough pizza for the two of us obviously if you have a bigger family more pizza lovers bigger eaters then definitely you know make more pizza and and as such but like when my brother-in-law comes over we make a lot bigger pizza so then what I'm going to do is spread this out a little bit more here. Try to get it as close to the edge. And I did grease my pan, by the way. And then I'm going to go ahead and just use some shredded cheese to go over the top of this. Now, we'll put some tomatoes and some lettuce uh, probably some salsa. Um, I don't know for sure what else we're going to put on there. 
and um, because it already has the onions already on here, so we don't need to add the onions. And that looks really good. Spread out the cheese just a smidge. Kind of pack everything down. And then I'm going to go ahead and put this in the June oven. Now, I don't know if this will know it's a pizza this time. Let's find out. Wow, look at that. It did say pizza. So it is a pizza. And it will say just continue. Start baking. Within about 17 minutes, we should have some pizza. And this actually does have a camera up above. So if I'm in a different room, I can even keep an eye on what's going on with this pizza, which is super cool. And this is, like I said, this is a June oven. I use it for toast and baking. I don't use my real oven a lot, but I do really like this for toast and all the things that I cook that normally that can fit in here. So I bought the lettuce pre-sliced up, but I always use my hand chopper because for one thing, my electric choppers don't do a very good job at this. The one that's small enough uh, makes my tomatoes pretty much turn into salsa, which is not cool. And then what I did is I did get out the sour cream and the taco sauce and stuff like that. But, you know, that was a nice sized tomato. And see how quickly that is and it's all nice and small. I love this hand chopper. I mean, for anything that's my... Uh, most favorite non-electric uh, gadget, it's definitely this Vidalia chopper. What I'll do is just cut open the lettuce and I don't know for sure if you can see. The pizza's looking really good. So, yeah, I mean, if you, if you do like taco pizza, this is a good way to make it. And um, obviously, if you do freeze dry, then you can actually free, you know, cook up your beans. I usually cook them in the Instapot, and then, you know, I put them in the freezer, and then I put them in the freeze dryer, and then I, and then I also still blend everything all up. So it makes it really nice to be able to have things like that, and um, and have it shelf stable, and you know, you don't have to worry about you know, did it go bad or whatever like that. I do have canned uh, panel beans also, and I'll take my um, immersion blender and just blend it also. That's what I did with that first batch that went into that. Man, that pizza's looking really good. <laughs> my husband's almost on his way home. Um, he just dropped off his load, and he has to travel from Lansing to Portland to um, uh, pick up his personal vehicle and drop off his semi. Um, he's been a truck driver for about 34 and a half years. He's very safe. He's a very good guy. Um, and I like to try to, even when I was oh, not on long-term disability, I always try to make sure that when he came through the door, no matter what time it was, that's why people say, why do you always have so many gadgets? It allowed me to put out still a halfway decent dinner while I still worked because I could take one of my last breaks, throw everything all together, throw it in the Instapot, throw it in my air fryer, throw it in the oven, um, whatever have you, and dinner could be ready. I get off work, he gets home, boom, and, it, and, it's, and it's time to eat. So people always wonder, well, why do you have so many gadgets? For one thing, I've always and always and always loved gadgets. I always have. Crock pots used to be my thing before the pressure cookers. But um, yeah, I think I own one, yeah, I think one crock pot now. I know I do have those ones that hold the three, you know, when you use for parties and the such. I still do have two of those, but I use for those for like Thanksgiving and parties and the such. So I'm not going to get rid of those, but I don't cook three things at the same time normally in those. But um, as far as if you were wondering why onions were on the no-no list, it was things like onions, celery, tomatoes, cucumbers, steak, um, lettuce. 
oh my god I about died I usually eat a salad seriously every day my husband's like I don't understand how you can have a salad every single day I said well I don't understand how you could eat soup every day either but I do love my salads um, I still can't taste them. I don't really know for sure if it's tasting good. In my mind, it's tasting good, and that's all that matters. But um, there was certain things with the trach that you couldn't eat. And that, you know, before I even left the hospital, I had to, um, before they even took me off the feeding tube, I had to pass a swallow study test to make sure that before they tried to feed me food that I wasn't going to choke to death and die on their watch. So I passed the, the um, test with flying colors, and um, then I was really happy. I'm like, oh, I could eat, I could eat, but then everything, I don't know for sure if it's because I was in the hospital for so long. I don't know for sure if it was a mental thing. Everything tasted like the hospital smelt. Um, it was just gross. I just... There were certain things that, you know, I mean, well, my husband wanted to go out and I'm like, it's not even no fun going out because I can't even eat half or a quarter or a tenth of anything I could normally eat. So when I got the okay to re-eat steak, we stopped on the way home from U of M and we got my first steak. And I just, I was, you know, and my first salad. I mean, you don't realize when you can't taste anything and you can't eat certain things for such a long time. I did not eat any of that food for over five months. Yeah, a salad person that eats salads usually before all this, I would eat salads two to three times a week. Now I usually eat them almost every day, at least five to six, sometimes seven times a week. But yeah, I mean, you when you hear me some of my videos, it's like, oh, I can't taste this and I can't taste that. And I did ask my U of M doctor I said, do you think having the trach is the reason why I can't taste things? And they said, because the smells come from your mouth and your nose, that because this is in there, it kind of like somehow blocks that, which we kind of thought that's what happened. So whenever this does come out, um, I have an appointment next month. When this does come out, then... Obviously, then there's the healing time, and if anybody's ever wondering, um, when they pull this out, it will just start to um, heal, and preferably there won't be any um, any uh, uh, stitches needed. And so it'll be hard for me to talk, and I'll have to stick my finger over it when I cough or when I talk um, until it actually closes on its own inside and out. So just a little bit of that out there but yeah this pizza is looking really good two more minutes it's looking really really good but anyway so that just you know there was just some ways to, for me to tell you on how to make this taco pizza I'll make it I'll finish this out as soon as the pizza is done but if you didn't know about the trach information I'm sorry if that was too much information but a lot of people don't know and um, I've had a lot of people this week more than normal and I don't know if it's from the shirts I wear and they're reading my shirt, but they're just like looking at me. And I saw my husband and my sister and I said, you know, I said, I really feel like a freak. So if you do see someone with any sort of disability whatsoever, I don't consider this a disability, but you know what I'm saying. Definitely don't stare at them and don't act like you don't see them, but don't stare at someone. I mean, if you're curious which people, I know they have a curious curiosity, they don't. At first glance, people probably think this is a choker necklace. And then they go, well, what's that sticking out, you know? Because you don't see a lot of people with trachs nowadays. But please, you know, if you're really curious, ask the person. The worst they could do is get mad and, you know, tell you to screw off or whatever. But, I mean, the thing is, I would much rather have someone come up to me and ask me what happened or what's wrong or whatever their question is of what it is so definitely think about someone else's feelings when um, when you're sitting there staring at somebody that is not whole um, eventually like I said I'll have this out and um, there will probably be a nice little scar there 
but I'd rather have the scar than to be dead. So that's a good thing. But my pizza, I'll flip this back around. If you can see that in there, let me look at that. Mm -hmm. Now it just got done. So what I'm going to do is and leave that in there for a few um, so it stays warm. And when my husband tells me he's on his 15, then I will go ahead and pull that out. And I'll show you the final thing once we cut it, get it cut. Okay, this is the finished product. Usually we pull it out and cut it on a cutting board. But we're going to go ahead and use the Pampered Chef one. See that nice little edge? So if we can't get to a certain spot, then it actually cuts very nicely. So there's our pizza for tonight, taco pizza. Thanks for stopping by. You have a wonderful day.